starting to get to know these statistics well. We know the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are both highly effective, 94 to 95 percent effective. The new Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is on the verge of authorization, comes in a bit lower at around 66%. So let's talk about it with our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley. That sounds like a pretty significant drop. But what is it about that that makes it not as far a gap between the, the Moderna Pfizer and then the Johnson & Johnson that we might see? Uh, you know, Tom, with the Johnson & Johnson, what we have here is a bit of what I call a number soup. There's all these efficacy numbers floating around, so you want to make sure you're looking at the right number and you're asking yourself, efficacy at doing what? Because that's the most important part is the rest of that sentence. So let's break down the numbers. So the efficacy of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is a single-dose vaccine, at preventing moderate to severe illness in all the countries that it was studied in is 66%. The efficacy in preventing moderate to severe illness here in the United States is 72%. The efficacy in preventing severe illness, which is that apple that we wanna to compare to the apple of the Moderna and the Pfizer, was 85% as compared to 94, 95% for Moderna and Pfizer, and the efficacy in preventing hospitalizations or deaths, which of course is the most important thing we wanna do with our vaccines is 100%. And then the efficacy in preventing asymptomatic infection actually came in at 74%, which is higher than what we saw with Moderna at about 66%. So you see that when you, when you talk about efficacy, you wanna say not just is it effective, but effective at doing what, because these are all different endpoints that were reported by J&J &J that were not you know, publicly reported by the other companies. Yeah, so it becomes apples and oranges because the efficacy numbers are different in different countries. Why so? Yeah, another interesting point. So how well a vaccine works depends on a lot of different factors. Of course, the most important factor is the vaccine itself and the type of immune response that it generates in people. But it also depends on what's happening in the community. So what is, how many cases are there in the community? Because if there's a lot of cases in the community, the efficacy of that vaccine or the difference between the vaccinated and unvaccinated group may get a little bit smaller because more people just get sick overall. And then keep in mind, we also want to think about the variants when it comes to the efficacy of the vaccine. So here in the United States, you know, we primarily have the wild type right now. We have some of the UK variant and some less of the South African variant. On the other hand, in South Africa, where this vaccine was studied, greater than 95% of the cases in an interim analysis were that South African variant. So we see there an efficacy of about 64% against that South African variant, which I think is pretty good. But that all of those factors can play into how how well a vaccine works. Well, we know the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are different, but the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is, is somewhat different. It's significantly different than those other two. What are some of the advantages to the J&J &J vaccine? Yeah, there are advantages to this vaccine, and the biggest advantage that I can see both for individuals and for, from a public health perspective is that single shot. You get that one shot, and two weeks later, you have immunity. This is in contrast, of course, to the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, which take four to six weeks to build immunity because you need those two shots that are separated in time. This vaccine is substantially easier to distribute and store as well because it can be maintained at standard refrigeration temperatures. It's not as susceptible to degradation like those messenger RNA vaccines are. So that's really going to make a huge dent in terms of improving access to rural parts of our state state and of course of the country as well, as well as people who may be older, have limited ability to come back for the second shot. You know, so I'm really excited that this vaccine is going to make a big difference. And what has me really hopeful as well is that efficacy that it showed against the South African variant, which so far all the vaccines are showing, but of course Moderna and Pfizer's response was attenuated and this appears to have pretty good efficacy.